Well, that was the jury panel, Agenda 2022 and beyond. Risk surface, CISO, and changing dimensions. And a big thank you to Dr. Dubey, Mr. Deodar, Mr. Muki, and Ms. Narkarni. And as always, thanks, Burgess, for leading this chat. Now, if you were to think about it, right, of all the custodians of our data, the government has an incredible amount of deeply sensitive data. And ergo, they have the greatest responsibility in securing it. And how do they go about ensuring its security? Dr. Gulshan Rai, the former National Cyber Security Coordinator for the Government of India, is connected to the summit. And I'd toss the virtual mic back to Rahul Neil Mani to understand from uh, Dr. Rai the challenges in creating a robust sec security, a cyber security infrastructure, and securing digital India. Rahul, back to you. Thank you, Ashwin. Um, a warm welcome to the ninth edition of Dynamics ISO Summit. As we know, we are in 2022. Last two years have been a great lesson, more so for the professionals in the domain of cybersecurity. Alongside the war unleashed to contain the catastrophic onslaught of novel mm -hmm. coronavirus, another big war was being parallelly fought uh, to defend the information assets from the lethal attacks unleashed by the threat actors globally. Be it the governments or the private sector enterprises, the tremors of those attacks were felt universally across the spectrum. Uh, there's been a tremendous effort to keep the attackers at the bay. And I have no doubt in saying that the defenders have been by and large successful in navigating through the tough times. Uh, during all this, uh, the role of policymakers, government, law enforcement agencies was even more critical. India as a nation is quite well poised to defend itself from many of these lethal assaults by the cyber warfare, be it the critical infrastructure, safeguarding of nodal government data assets or the private sector. There has been a consistent, praiseworthy and concerted effort to keep a close guard on the enemies. To talk about many such issues, we have the honor of having with us one of the most profound gurus of cybersecurity in India. He was India's first ever National Cybersecurity Coordinator for the Office of the Prime Minister of India. In his 35 years of illustrious career, he served as the Director, Gen Director General of CERT in. He headed the e security and cyber, cyber law division STQC. He was the Executive Director of Earnet. He authored India's first cybersecurity policy and served on the expert committee on data protection, which was chaired by Justice B. N. Krishna. He has led numerous delegations to the UN, WTO, and ICANN. Um, he's also a senior advisor now with Dua Associates. He serves on the global board of International Red Cross and USIDC. He serves on the board of NSE and is a senior advisor at the Vivekanand Foundation. Also, he's, the, he's on the technology advisory board of IIT Kanpur Startup Hub. I can go on and on and no prizes to guess whom are we talking about? Welcome, Dr. Gulshan Rai. We are honored and privileged to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rahul. Thank you very much. Great, sir. So as we start our discussion, uh, I would like to ask my first question to you. Uh, more than, I mean, lakhs and lakhs of incidents of cyber attacks were, were tracked and reported to India's uh, CERT in 2021. Uh, according to official estimates, ransomware attack, attacks have increased by 120% in India. Why is suddenly India on the target of nation state actors and other threat actors? Rahul, very interesting question you have asked it. There are a couple of reasons there, and it can't be one reason there. Uh, over a period of time, the penetration of the digital technologies and e governance application had permeated into every section of the society in the ecosystem a quite a big way. Can you imagine any Indian uh, uh, passing the day without getting into the cyberspace or without touching the cyber technologies there? Not only cyber te te touching the cyber technology, they deal with variety of technologies and I would say convergence of technologies there. One may not agree, we may not notice it, but you are dealing with the artificial intelligence and you type a message and you some, some other message comes to you. You type an email, something looks at you. You do a, you open your email box, 
and he suggests you many of the things there. You open the thing, someone tells you the, the, sends the report, how much you have seen the screen or how much you have done. These are the appointment pending with you. You have a, I had a, a, a video uh, meeting with you today. It was planned. Sabrati has sent me some time ago. It started uh, flagging to me since morning. Today you have an interview at three o'clock. Today you have interaction with Raul at three o'clock there. So we are dealing with AI in a way or not way, may you may notice it. When you're dealing with the AI, you're dealing with the big data also because searching the data, apart from the convention technologies, what we see is a communication part of it or maybe IT part of it. So today, we at any point of a time, Rahul, we are dealing with convergence of technology, including the encryption there. You see, encryption at one time was part of the mathematics, mathematician there. Today, it is a part of the computer scientists or cyber kind of a thing, every technology deal with the things there. So in any point of time, we are dealing with the convergence of technology and this has permeated into the society in the every plot. You look at the databases, GST, my, I, if, I, if I get a payment from the government, I get in, in the EPA form there. Crypto, look at India is a third country in the in the in the in crypto market. I mean, couple of billion dollar the trade is happening for me. Yes. The India, to my understanding, is not doing mining, but our trading which is happening there. You mm -hmm. tell me any sector in the India where the digital is not there. I can tell you my example. My mother is 87 years old. My son, they are in US there. She made it a point to talk to them on a video channel there every day. And she does it. She doesn't require my help. She doesn't require my help. So the technology has primated. People are becoming more aware about it there. And that's the reason, you see, whenever there is a good thing, the, the adverse thing or the malicious thing also starts coming over there. This is the, this is the special characteristics of this technology, this area there. You get good, you get bad also there. More pen penetration, more kind of a, a interaction there and the hackers have a larger surface or to a uh, large, we expose a larger surface to hackers and that increases the kind of a incident there. And that's what is happening and that's the reason uh, things are. And I feel more we dabble into technology, more we as we proceed on, there will be more kind of a cyber attacks will be there. That's one, okay. But the other factor is that the technology which is coming up, Good old days time, you look at this, I have dealt with the HP kind of a thing, it's a digital kind of thing, VMS system, proprietary system. They were rugged, okay? They were they were put into the operation after a longer time and there were not so too many changes there. There were not too many interfaces there. But today, the technology is coming, there's a pressure on the companies to introduce a new product because of the competing kind of an environment there. They have to make money, they have spent a huge amount of money in research and development, so they have to recover the money there. So as a result, the product which is pushed into the market is not a is not is completely robust to, to withstand the cyber attacks there. The hackers are earlier, they take advantage of the weakness in the system quite early. And yeah. that also is a result of weakness in the technology is, a, is also resulting in a more and more exploitation and the cyber breaches. Today, you can't say not anything is 100% secure. There are heterogeneity has dropped in more. Heterogeneity has dropped in more. Look at one more than a 1 billion PC. I mean, the, we have the uh, mobile phones there and more than 50% of mobile phones are now the smartphone with the internet, with all kinds of applications there. So I think the attack service has increased. There's a more vulnerability introduced in the products there by virtue of the fast turnover there. And the penetration has increased. All is a complex matrix. Okay. And this complex matrix is resulting a single a, 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 a value of the matrix, larger cyber attacks. No, I think uh, two very, very important messages that you have given that one is the, uh, you know, how the technology has permeated uh, across societies in different stratas, different age groups that itself has broadened the threat surface. Second important point and very, very vital point is that the commoditization of technology has gone to such an extent that in the quest for launching products faster in the market, I think 
um, the, the ruggedized nature of the product is now being set aside. And therefore, uh, you know, the product itself is very vulnerable and therefore uh, the attack, attack surface has broadened. Thank you very much for this answer. So, so you have seen the cybersecurity scenario, uh, the threat surface evolving in the past 30 years that you have served in technology, the e-governance, the cybersecurity, cyber law domains. So in the wake of unstoppable momentum where digital India is, is a critical mission, how do you think we can strengthen the security of our critical infrastructure, which includes sectors such as power, telecom, oil and gas, health, because these are the prime targets of uh, the threat actors? Uh, I think you have you. There's a standard jargon which all of you give it, and any other anybody else also will give it. I don't think there is going to be any conference or seminar where these standard jargons of people processing technology will not be used. It will be used number of times. Those those words will be used there. So the focus will be on the people processing technology. Okay. Now, technology innovations will take place. We cannot stop those innovations there. The old technology will go out. And I, I often speak to and uh, argue with my colleagues in the IT ministry where I see that they want to have a semiconductor plant of some 45 nanometer or 22 nanometer. And they say, we don't need it. We don't need it. I said, yeah, you don't need it. That's fine. I understand. You can manage the toys there. Large market is there. You can manage 45 nanometer technology. But the technology, who will maintain the technology? Today, you go to the three years old PC, nobody wants to maintain their personal computer. You go to the mobile phone, down to, you look at the Apple and, and, the, uh, uh, and those uh, Google there, they have stopped maintaining the system. They have withdrawn the system before Apple 11 in the market. If you look at the Google, Apple, after they launched Apple 13, they have withdrawn the system. They will not be able to maintain because whose inventory cost is there. Okay, so technology innovation will come. Technology will have to be adopted, and we have to move on. We have to move on. Technology using technology to detect the breaches and flaws is not the entire answer that helps you to determine twenty percent or twenty-five percent by technology to do that. Then the other two factor comes up. And I think if you look at the IAMs or the, the business school, they have introduced another four-factor management. So apart from technology, it will give you protection. It will help you 20-25%. But how you will use the technology and how you will use the process to manage those technology, that's going to make a big difference. That's a big difference. For example, Everyone says, every mail provider, every IT company, every technology company who provides the account to us, services to us, they say you change your password once in three months. Some say one, once in three years. Someone say, everybody says, don't use less than eight characters. Don't you mix up, then you put a password, lower character, base character, and special character, they tell you it. But how many of us you use it? That's it. That's it. That's your people and the process comes up there. So if I use the word, I have a, I have some three letter word as a user ID. Fine. But if I use the same three letter word and a password, the technology is moving up better. You can hack it in another 10 minutes there. So the, the process and people, they provide almost 70 percent to 75 percent of the issue to to save the your cyber to to prevent cyber breaches there that's one okay the second part is that and you see i mean you said you said the critical sector named it i said critical sector you named the whether it's the banking or the power sector or the fertilizer sector or the refinery sector you you named all those sectors there the other factor is that you see the technology is hybrid. You are there is a legacy application. There are legacy kind of hardware. Now you are changing it. My cost does not have much. I don't have much but the funds with me. That's where the management comes up. So we what we do, we keep on changing in a phase wise there. The phase wise creates a more vulnerability system there. I am also inclined to use all jargons, IoT, use IoT, everyone comes up, use Wi-Fi, 
open source, open kind of a standard. We all time talk about it. So we keep on implementing technology in a pace wise. That's a management decision because funds are not there. And skill is also not there. So I think the, we need to look at both people, process, technology, and management all three together. Today, it is a myth that technology, if I, if I install, if I deploy a firewall or an antivirus, I am I'm through it. No, it is not like that. You look at the, after all, bot. If bot is also a software. Na? I mean, root kits are software. But normal antivirus is not able to solve it. You put a you put a separate uh, uh, bot scanner, bot preventer, or you put a web firewall to access the malware there. So I think we need to look at comprehensively all aspects, looking at people, process, and technology, and 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 management. Okay, that's why the word whosoever has coined the word people, process, technology, management, it goes in the importance. It goes in the importance also. The people, if people are trained skill, they may use the technology in a different way. I think all of us, all of us or your audience will be there. Many of us will be using many of the old legacy kind of a techniques or legacy kind of a, a, a issues there in the technology, depending on our physical security there. But we follow the carelessness. We, follow, we, we avoid the carelessness. We follow careful kind of approach there. So people process Technology, if people are trained, they will use the proper process, they understand the process. If the proper process is there, you will use the proper technology there. And if three of them are there, the management will be vibrant, they will provide the fund. You see, over a period of a time, the uh, expenditure on the people training, capacity building has gone up from 17, 7 to 18, 18% in a next in a period of the last five years there. That's awareness part. And I think it will go more because it in every year you require the people to send for a training, to exposure there, in-house training, expose them, the new technology, new beaches, new kind of things has come up. So I think we need to focus on people, process, technology, and management to look at it. Everything needs to be integrated manner there. We need to have a cyber policy, which should be a comprehensively look as address all those four aspects there there and then they wish the policy should give us how to enforce it and how to uh, monitor it and how to detect it and a very very simple kind of a language which anybody can understand no so you began by saying that it is jargon and in i mean no conference no uh, uh, no dialogue starts without it but i think uh, the importance of the first two elements in in this which is people and process I continues uh, to be to be uh, you know up there very very paramount because technology can solve only a certain amount of problems. It cannot solve all the problems, and people who are who are deploying those technologies, who are using those technologies, and the processes that govern those those people need to be uh, need to be uh, changed and need to be revised as well. Wonderfully said. So. One more thing which actually perturbs me a lot, and, and I think you have been very vocal about it, is uh, the coordination between uh, you know, government nodal agencies and the private sector to understand and mitigate cyber risks. Um, more often than not, I always hear that private organizations uh, hesitate in disclosing their vulnerabilities in the system for multiple reasons, uh, maybe reputational losses, maybe, you know, um, uh, net scorecard uh, can can get hampered. So, do you think that there is there's a need to do more there? What should the industry and the government do together to overcome this challenge? Rahul, uh, I, I will certainly address with examples also there. Yeah, please. My own experience, but let me come back to the second question there. See, the concept of people process technology is not a new concept. But the same concept will be more relevant when we are moving to metaverse and web 3.0 technologies. Okay. We are we are in that era. We are in that era. Look at the big technology companies that already they are they have implemented only then they announced it. Absolutely. Okay. Now it will it will lead to a new products. It will lead to new services all together comprehensively. Whether you require legal services or you require technology services or you require a new product there. 
the people and process will become more important because we say it's a distributed distributed so the issue distribution will require a different kind of an understanding and technique um, and techniques and the capacity building we, you and we should understand and many people who are doing they have to understand it absolutely how do you account for the risk that's why i say innovations itself are creating a challenge for us in the detection and prevention of those things there now let me come back to your question the coordination among these things there you know when i wrote the information technology act first time i i first act came up version came up in 2000 okay so i wrote in 1998 it took start two years time to do that and then the second version came in 2007 passed by the parliament and 2010 and 11 we have a commonwealth games there okay. but prior to the second in when the second version came up i realized that you got to today we are talking about a multi stakeholder approach okay there is nothing in the technology sector which a one actor or one stakeholder can do on its own okay there will be there says heterogeneity has come up on one side you have defense on one side you have civilian sector third you have health sector so critical sector consumer sector is all coming together and you will find this more when we are moving towards the web 3.0 or we are moving to the 5g next generation communication bandwidth pipes are more everyone is talking about technology training they are coming around on that there so it is difficult to hit all heterogeneous application we come on the same backbone there you look at more kind of things there but in those days so you see the private sector role is is regularly getting increased capital you see the critical sector the private sector started playing a bigger role much much bigger role they are more advanced in terms of deployment of technology this is the many of the government kind of institution there there so private sector role is is getting increased in there and they're more aware you see at one time good all the team of the in the country used to go to the government and but today the cream is going to the private sector because of the better pay packets and better kind of returns all kind of things are there so the issue you cannot neglect the private there will be neglect the private sector there will be a unique blend of the government and private sector what does it require it requires a different mindset we cannot have a a kind of a big a lakshman rekha around us that we are government we will not talk to him and then i had built in keeping those things in the mind i had built the the section 70 a 70 a and 70 b in the it act because the private sector may not give you any information so you will have to issue the letter to him give a direction to him and then they will provide the information because any ip we come from wherever you don't know all gateways were private bsnl was there was no bsnl or tata had come there that tcl has come everything has become private right. okay. and airtel and vodafone as well as the jilan jio came subsequently but all the players have come from there they will not give you information they will delay they will not give it to you so i had put the condition that the that dg cert will direct and the information with that to be supplied and there will be if they i mean he can file a case and imprisonment of one year for refusing to obey his direction but believe me now in my entire life of the research and thereafter i did not use any i did not send any notice to anywhere okay. i did not use this i mean invoke this clause to send a direction there is a the question of, of giving a punishment or penalty or imprisonment i handled the commonwealth games and felix mohan and many other people will tell you or the people who are there i used to send a message look this ip is a a, a defaulting is a, a, a kind of a bad ip kindly block it raul i am so grateful the if within 10 minutes or 15 minutes the ip used to be blocked okay now what was the thing required first of all the mindset you need to work with them they do need to set up a trust factor between the stakeholders and player because we are dealing with a multi stakeholder okay we are dealing with they must they must 
trust you that you are asking everybody's benefit you have no vested interest you have no you are not trying to favor someone or uh, or trying to grind your own interest there no so trust factor is a more important but i don't see today yeah my successor day and night are showing directions i used to pick up a phone as a dd sir and talk to anyone i need this information please send me they used to go out of the way to give it to me so i think the the one of the most factor is required a trust absolutely in meeting between them remove your lakshman reka remove the barrier look i am your friend i am trying to protect you i have nothing to personal to grind don't give me anything for myself absolutely no matter whatever regulation you make it until unless there is a encouragement and trust the regulation will not be able to do the enforcement danda is not the solution to everything absolutely you no, got no, to you, use, you got to use the danda you got to use the blessings and you got to keep your hand on their back on their head and bless them also that's what so this is the leadership and and load leader role and statesman role you got to play there so today there is a more necessity of the different heterogeneous sector to come forward government as well as the player to secure the things there the government if i if i let me be very frankly admit if someone says in the government different agencies they are the champions of technology they understand each and everything that is a fox i used to call each and every one yeah mujhe samajh mein nahi aata samjhao please and make me understand i can give you a number of names there so i think you got to set up a a network between the people there you got to identify what things are there i mean i can i this is a, a forum i can give you many many a, a different kind of incident but happen for the first time industry se kuch hua hi nahi hai kuch hua hi nahi hai aise se main aa raha hu tumhare paas i used to go there i sit down aur ye ho gaya ki nahi ho gaya <laughs> so you got to till that na not that every time you got to hammer like a father you got to hammer like a elder and you got to sit down with the friends there that's why so my goal is that the government need to play a role of a father not of a role of a regulator there in this scenario of cyber where the stakeholders are there they are coming up there you don't know the impact coming up there knowledge does not lie at one place not as i at distributed places in the government this sector rao is already web or 3.0 because everything is distributed so so no you very well said it and i think i think there is a juice and crux in what you just said that you know act like an advisor act like a father don't always act like a regulator with a danda in your hand because that becomes a big deterrent for people to come forward and cooperate with you very simply said so one one last question that i will i mean combine two questions in one because i think they are overlapping um as a, as the former national cybersecurity coordinator which was the first of its kind in the pm's office um how how differently did you see things when it came uh, to the attacks uh, being being targeted on india as a nation from the adversaries which were nation states or other private hackers um and and what were the efforts uh, that went uh, went into it to safeguard the whole vision of digital india uh rahul i think you have asked a very 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 important question there i said i think uh, uh as i said in my previous uh, uh, uh Uh, interaction in my, in my uh, earlier questions to which you have asked me there things are becoming more and more complex there the complexity is increasing because of technology innovation and many other factors there the one of the factor which we are not discuss is the geopolitics okay. this this technology has a, a unique characteristics number one as you use the word data monetization now so you use the word there is no warranty guarantee in this technology there okay if you go to buy a motor car the cars are called back by the manufacturer even after 5 years when there is a manufacturing defect yahan koi manufacturing defect nahi hai there is no warranty guarantee you pay you get a maintenance okay virtual borderless or all these are standard kind of the jargons are there that's what the stand the character of the technology is there now these are the factor which are now being exploited in the geopolitical arena 
Okay. You have seen the US pipeline case. You have seen the solar wind case, you have heard it. You have, you have heard the, the Microsoft Exchange cloud server of Microsoft getting uh, hacked day and night and um, impacting there. You have seen in, in India also similar cases there. I mean, today when the, when the world, in certain part of the world, there is a tension between the two countries and one world, the Western world is against one of the country that you can't attack the country, eminent attack, they are all talking about it. But look at the, the cyber attacks have already started exploiting in particular target there. We all point towards our northern neighbor there that he is day and night attacking and trying to do kind of a things there. And they, the whole, there are evidences also, very strong evidences are there. Mm -hmm. So the geopolitics of the cyber is becoming more and more prominent. Okay. Now, you see, I have been participating in the... I, I have been participating in the uh, in the uh, norms of norms of behavior uh, uh, UNGGE that UN set up a group of government expo, governmental experts there 2001 and when I last for 2017 16 years we didn't come to agreement what to the norms of behavior in cyberspace. There are no norms of behavior when you talk about the humanitarian sector. You know, you will not physical attack on the hospitals. Okay. But there is no such norms in the cyber when they when the COVID happened, so many hospitals were attacked by the by the uh, ransomware. Okay, and there are there are reported cases there, and the case in the court also there. A one one girl was died there when she was taken, she died in the hospital because hospitals are not, the systems are not working and nobody reported that everything is jammed there. So the geopolitics is becoming more and more prominent there because it's easy for a country to launch and damage the other country using a virtual borderless technology and where the issue of identification or, or attribution is still very, very weak there. Morphine, and spoofing is a, is an order of the day and it's becoming a more and more complex because of the evolving technologies there. Okay. So I think the challenges are increasing there. And that's why it puts a great challenge uh, uh, aspect. I had, I had seen those challenges emerging there. And I, now the challenges are really very, very complex and very, very high there. Very, very high. So I think we need to, first of all, Anything in the area of cyber is not valid more than three years. You continuously need to do, whether it's a legislature or a policy aspect there. I think the, the, the government will have to sit down with the stakeholder and try to relook at those things. If anyone, Rahul, tried to say that, look, I will, everything should come to me and I will do, decide everything, control, go nature. Nature, and the cyber world is not meant for that. Yeah. So I think we need to, we, I had adopted a very, very cooperative attitude. Every, every, I mean, on a very short interval, I used to meet the players, captain. I used to go very frequently to them at the airport. The CSR who used to attend me there, Roji airport travel other colleagues, they, they never used to travel so much there. But you require the people to go there. Na? You need to create a trust. You need to tell them small, 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 care, careful things. I think you can achieve a lot. So we need to put now, today, we need to put a, a, a different kind of a policies, a, a procedures, and maybe look at the law. First of all, we need to look at the law that, I mean, they sh we must now evolve a cyber security law. That's what we need to evolve a law. We need to modify the cyber security policy. The, my successor is framing this policy since the time he joined. There is now three years of the policy. I it has to come up. But these policies need to address the kind of a technological innovation is happening, micro services, micro architecture. Right. Then the policy will be valid for another three, four years. The government, nothing moves less than five years. Hopefully, they will, three years will, 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 they will move it. But then you got to look at it at 3.0. <clears throat> how these things are happening. I think these factors are more important to do that. We need to open with it. We need to look at with open mind, with a technology heavy mind and try to evolve the policy. That is the need of the hour today. No, excellent. Uh, I think, I think uh, you know, another very important message is that the, the, at the pace at which the world is changing, the pace at which 
uh, humans are changing, their behavior is changing. Again, the pace at which the technology is changing, regulations have to keep pace with that change. And on that note, I must thank you very much, sir. I wish I had more time to interact with you. It was very, very, very enriching. Very pleased to have you uh, on, the, on, 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 on this session, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you.